How to deploy a WAR file to Tomcat using a Jenkins pipeline. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. Also, I have a Tomcat server that's freshly set up. No other apps have been running on it other than the initial installation. What our plan is, is to build a WAR on our agent and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that WAR file, push it over to the Tomcat server, and deploy it within that Tomcat instance. Now, for a production environment, I probably would not take that build and push directly to a Tomcat server. But for a lore environment, such as an integrated development environment, or maybe even a staging server, I'm okay with that. For a production server, what I would do is I'd take that WAR file, push it to a binary repository, and then kick off another pipeline job that would then take that war file from the binary repository and deploy it to numerous Tomcat servers. But for this video, we're focusing on, we're building it and deploying it directly to a Tomcat server. Now there's also a sample repository for this video. The link to that repository is down in the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at that repository. What I'm using is a Java web application framework called Rife2. It's one of my favorite Java web application frameworks and it's really simple to set up. If you're interested more in Rife2, there's a link to another video that I did about Rife2 down in the description. Now let's take a look at the Jenkins file because that's what we really need to understand. Within our Jenkins file, what we have is a couple of basic items. Within the environment block, I've set up a handful of environment variables. First off, I have Tomcat creds is using the credentials helper to load in a credential with the identifier of pi-ssh-key. Now my Tomcat server is running on a Raspberry Pi. Prior to starting the recording of the video, I had SSH in into the agent and then manually SSH from the agent over to the Raspberry Pi to make sure all the known host and anything else that SSH might need is already set up and ready to go. However, when we are going to be pushing from our agent over to the Tomcat server, what we're going to be using is using this credential that has already been set up. Now this credential is an SSH private key type credential. Let's go ahead and review that real quick. We'll go back into the dashboard, manage Jenkins. Let's take a look at credentials. What we can see is here's my PI SSH key credential. If we take a look at it, what we can see here, if we go into update, we can see that it's a private key type credential. So I've already uploaded the private key for this credential. Let's go ahead and go back over into our Jenkins file. What we'll see here is I've also set up a environment variable for Tomcat server. I've also set up root war location. Now, what this is telling me is that on my Tomcat server, in the directory of HomePy tools, Apache Tomcat 10.1.18 web apps, that is where I'm going to take and drop that root war file into that directory. I've also got two more environment variables specifically for the build side. I have the local war directory, which is build slash dist. So when we actually build the application, the war file will reside within a relative directory build slash dist. And then finally, the name of the war file locally is going to be app-010.war. So when we do the build, we're first going to double check our tooling, I'm making sure I've got Java set up, and then I'm also checking for the build tool. The BLD tool is available through the Rife2 framework. So when I initially bootstrapped the project, it also dropped in the build binary for me. So what we're gonna do, we'll do a build download purge first, a build clean compile, we'll do a pre-compile, we'll do a test, and then finally we do the build war. Now I could have skipped all of these earlier steps and just done a build clean war, but I decided to break out each one of these just so I can see through the process if anything failed along the way, I didn't have to wait and try to dig it out within clean war. I'm just taking a look at each of these progressions. Once we have our war file, then that's when we're going to go ahead and copy the war files from where it is on the agent over to our Tomcat server. Now remember, our Tomcat server is running the default root application. If you're not familiar with that, that's what this is. So let's go ahead and take a look back again. What we're going to do, we're going to say SSHI. We're using the Tomcat creds. Remember the Tomcat creds are loaded in from the environment block using the credentials helper. What Tomcat creds is, is the location 
of that private key on the file system that's being loaded in from the credential. So it's a temporary file on the file system so we can actually connect up and use that credential. What also happens during the loading of Tomcat creds is we also get an underscore USR variable. That variable is the PI user. So there's a username that's associated with that SSH private key credential type. That is the value that's gonna show up here, that's PI. Then we say at Tomcat server. So if we were to take a look at one, two, four, and five, each of these are just doing SSH. We're gonna be using SCP to move the file over. But before we take a look at the SCP, let's take a look at all of the commands that we're gonna be running over on the Tomcat server. First off, I've put in the fully qualified path to Catalina SH, and I'm gonna say Catalina SH stop. So we'll go ahead and get Tomcat shut down. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of any references to the existing root application that's running on that Tomcat server. What you can see here is I'm deleting the root directory, and I'm also deleting the root war file. Now let's go ahead and skip the SCP line for just a moment. Let's take a look at what we have in this fourth line. We're changing the ownership of the root war file over on the Tomcat server. And then finally we run Catalina start. So that will bring Tomcat back up. Now let's take a look at our SCP line that we have. Again, we're providing the credentials. We are picking up where is the file on my agent. Right now, remember that's the local war directory and war file. Those are referenced from our environment variables, local war dir and war file. Then we SCP that over using this user, using the Tomcat server, and then we use the root war location and we give it the name of root war. In order for the application to deploy into the root application, we have to name the war file, whatever it is that it needs to be. In this case, it's root, all uppercase. So again, what we're doing, Catalina stop, cleaning out anything that was referencing root. We copy over what is the app 010 war file, but we rename it when it lands over on the server via SCP. We go ahead and change the ownership of that file. It should already be the correct ownership, but we're just doing it as a safety. And then finally, we go ahead and do our Catalina start. So again, let's verify where we're at right now. If we take a look at our server, I'm on my app. We take a look at the root, we're seeing the default Tomcat application. Let's go ahead and go back over into our job. I've set up the Tomcat job already. It's pointing at that repository using the Jenkins file. So let's go ahead and click on build now. Now that the job completed, let's scroll up and take a quick look here. What we can see is all of the build commands ran. We see clean compile, pre-compile, test, and then finally we see build war. And then what we can see here from the final line of build war, it generated the app 010 war file inside of the build dist directory. Then let's take a look at the commands that ran. We have our Catalina stop. We cleaned up all of the root information that is on the Tomcat server. We SCP over our war file. Notice that we changed build dist app 010 war once it landed over on the Tomcat server, it's now root war. We go ahead and change the ownership. And then finally we do a Catalina start. So once we go ahead and go back over to our Tomcat server and we refresh this page, what we expect to see is our app, which we do. We no longer see the default Tomcat root application. We now see our application. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.